that they don't, you know, that they, they don't want to attribute, so they gave up on God. They gave up on God. Gave up on God. This is what's happened to most people. No, nobody's born an atheist. I've never met someone who told me I've born an atheist. I believed in it. I've been an atheist all my life. Doesn't happen. Doesn't happen like that. Something happens along the way to make them so angry at God that they give up on Him. Yeah. And the the greatest way to give up on Him is to deny Him. And that's what usually exist. happens. Something tragic happened in a person's life. And they just get, they don't get the answers, the proper answers. Yes. Which in the last and final revelation of mankind, that we recommend that everyone pick up this book and read. Because the author is God Almighty. God Almighty. And he explains why certain things happen to us. He explains all the different tests and trials that we're going through, what the purpose of life. Now when you don't find these answers, then usually, or if you're looking in the wrong place, you usually give up. That's a lot That's of people done. Absolutely. Now, I like to tell people that they can take do a, a simple test. They can actually sit wherever they're at, if they're at a desk right now, if they're in their living room, and just look at the little things around them. For instance, we I got a pen, I got I got I got the uh, cup, I got the Dean Show cup, I got the you know uh, uh, table. You got your jacket, you got your sweater, you got your hat. All these things, someone designed it, someone made it, someone put it together. That's right. The shoes to serve a purpose to protect our feet when we walk. The pen to write with has a purpose. The socks that go on your feet. The hat that you wear. Everything has a purpose and it's been made by somebody who made it for a purpose to serve us. But this body that is so detailed, the cell, the eye, the human camera. Yeah, everything we take for granted. I mean, all these things. I mean, somebody take this. Why does that do that? Gravity. Yeah. Without gravity, what happens? Life is not existent. We don't exist without this one little thing we take for granted every day. Who can do something like this? Who can create something like this? You know, these things don't happen by chance. These things don't come just per chance. It's not possible. Just like if you and and, and really, it goes back down to just plain logic. If you see the tallest, one of the tallest buildings, we're here in Chicago and you see the Cirrus Tower. Now if you were taking somebody sightseeing and you showed them the Cirrus Tower and they said, wow, I wonder who designed this. He said, nobody. He <laughs> said, nobody. It, just, it, just, just, it just grew that tall and it just popped up. It's just there. People like, you fool, what are you talking <laughs> yeah. about? You they put you in a mental hospital. You think you're joking. But these are the logical things. Why, when it comes down to, to, to something so great like this universe and us, that somebody just denies the creator behind this? And you see a beautiful painting, and there's got to be somebody who painted it. A chef with some food. You don't question that nobody prepared that meal. So it really comes down to just logic. It's just simple yeah, common sense. That's it. It's first thing, if you were walking through the desert and found a watch, you would be like, who left this watch here? Who put it here? You know? Yes. You would not think like, just, just, oh, this watch is just here, just showed up. You know? All these things that we take for granted. You know? Like one atheist tried to sell me. You know, I had a dialogue one time with the atheists and a five percenter. You know, they they deny the existence of God. They think you know some essence within Who's them. That? Five percenters. Five percent. I've never heard of them. Um, so it would be a very long topic. Maybe yeah. we'll get into that in another show. But they basically, you know, were like everything is self-existent. Yeah. You know, everything is uh, exists in and of itself. I told them, I said, hold your breath. <laughs> if you're self-existent, hold your breath. Don't eat. Don't drink. Don't sleep. Doesn't work. It doesn't work. No. All these things are put in a perfect order. You have to eat, you have to drink, you have to sleep, you have to breathe. You have to have the sun is radiate. You have to have the, the same things, the, the, the chlorophyll that the plants need to exist. The only way that this chlorophyll reaches us is because of the way that the, the, the layers of, the, of the, the heavens are created. I mean, you know, one of these things, one small minute thing out of place, life does not exist. We're going to continue on with just some logical proofs. And this destroys all the other falsehood and everything else that just is irrational. This is very logical. We're going to continue on using our intellect, which people deny that someone has given us this, and we attribute it to the creator of the heavens and earth. So we're going to come back on the Dean Show. Sit tight. We'll be right back. Check this out. Assalamu alaikum, peace be upon you, you're watching The Dean Show, and this is the portion of the show we call the mailbag, this is where we go through the mail and see the questions and comments that we've had from you guys, 
and take calls at that time too. But right now, I want to address some of the questions that are coming to us from some atheists talking to us about, is there really any proof for what you're saying and how come you don't believe in evolution? Well, that's a good question. First and foremost, as always, I say, thank you for asking me about my religion. Then I mention that we have the truth and the proof. We can't lie or we'll go to hell forever. And certainly, we have the authentic Quran in the original recitation Arabic language. So, that's there for us. Let us deal now with this question. Why we don't believe in evolution? It's the Muslims, okay, who are the only ones on the planet where our religion is telling us that there is creation and yet there is a form of evolution at the same time. And it's never been changed. This is not an apologetic. This was offered 1400 years ago, long before Darwin was even a little small monkey. And <laughs> But seriously, it tells us in the Quran that Allah is al Khalak. He says, Khalaknal insana fi asani taqwim. He said that He is the Creator that created the human beings in the best of form. But then He also said that He is al Bari, and al Bari means the one who shapes or evolves things from one state to another. So Allah is al Khalak, and Allah is al Bari. So that's the solution to the problem. If you're worried about it, now put your mind at ease. If there really is any form of evolution, it was already discussed in the Quran 1400 years ago. And as far as creation, and we know that exists, that was the same. There really isn't any evidence, by the way, in science to produce an example of real evolution of a species changing over to a totally different species. No such thing as a skunk becoming a giraffe, no such thing as an alligator becoming a snake, and no such thing as a human being becoming a monkey or the other way around. And we'll refer you now to a website so that you can go check all this out for yourself. Go to scienceislam.com. Two words but put together as one. Scienceislam.com. Check it out for yourself. Let us know what you think. We're going to return you back to the program in progress. You're watching The Dean Show. Welcome back to The Dean Show. We're talking to the atheists, having a dialogue, and we're giving some logical points. Really, just common sense. You don't look at a Mercedes-Benz or a Rolex watch, and you don't think that, you know what, there's not somebody who spent time designing this, someone who orchestrated this, who manipulated this and put this together. But the universe with all the billions of billions of galaxies and then we come down to everything that's actually subservient to us like the, the plants and the animals and the food, that, the oil, everything's been put in this earth for us so you're gonna you know some of these just simple things you, you, you don't, you deny yeah. they just use a little bit of thinking, you don't have to look too far no, no, you don't have to look very far to find it, even, even God says in the Quran, the final revelation of mankind, if you want evidence of my existence, look inside yourself. Look inside yourself. That should be more than sufficient evidence to realize that I am the creator. The Quran really doesn't, uh, because we've, not too many people in the past, I think now we're, uh, because the majority of people, even though they have the wrong conception of God, they testify that there is a God. Yes. But they have, I'm sorry, the wrong concept of God. Yeah. They turn them into a man, into a stone, into a stick. They pray to, to idols. But Islam comes to clear all this up. But the majority of people actually testify that there is a God. Yeah, the majority, yes. Yeah. So how, do, how does somebody get out of this um, dilemma now? Because at the end, what do you really got to live for? You know, you might live for your wife or your children, but they're actually going to be gone. And... Now, what is, what is the meaning of life, actually, if you don't believe in that higher power? How do you talk to someone and persuade them, logically, <clears throat> to get out of this and to move forward? <clears throat> well, you have to bring in that understanding first that there is there's a creator, you know, because once you realize that all of this is not here per chance, it has a purpose, then you understand that that purpose is not just, like God did not just place us on this earth to live for 5, 10, 15, 20, 50, 100 years and then we go into non-existence. You know, God put us on this earth for a purpose, and this is just the beginning of the game. 
you know, and we have to understand that all, most major religions believe in the afterlife. Almost all religions believe in some form of the afterlife. Almost everything believes in some other form of the afterlife. In whatever way you believe in it, that there is going to have something here, and what you do here is going to play some consequence on that. Just like in this world, what you do now, like what I do now, if I go commit a crime, I'm going to be punished for that. I'm going to have to pay that consequence. The same here with this little bit of span of life that we live in. Um, in the next life, is going to be based on how we live this one. You know, so we have to find our purpose, which our purpose is that we were put on this earth to worship the one creator in everything that we do. Um, and that in doing so, we would have a happy life in the next life, which would be forever in, in paradise. And if we don't, then we would not have a very happy next life, which would be forever in hell. And you know what? That makes sense. Because as you pointed out that what you do now, what you sow is what you reap. We'll be right back. Check this out.